Hi everyone, welcome to Pronounce Word Channel, let's practice listening in English. Objective, to probe into the advantages of utilizing electric planar through oral cavity and adenoidectomy and the curative effect. Objective, to probe into the advantages of utilizing electric planar through oral cavity and adenoidectomy and the curative effect. Objective, to observe the effect and security of the treatment by low temperature plasma melt under nasal endoscope on adenoidal hypertrophy in children. Objective, to observe the effect and security of the treatment by low temperature plasma melt under nasal endoscope on adenoidal hypertrophy in children. Objective to investigate development and growth process of neural invasion with human salivary adenoid cystic carcinoma by general morphology study. Objective to investigate development and growth process of neural invasion with human salivary adenoid cystic carcinoma by general morphology study. Method, a retrospective analysis was conducted on 80 cases of adenoidal hypertrophy subjected to endoscopic adenoidectomy. Method, a retrospective analysis was conducted on 80 cases of adenoidal hypertrophy subjected to endoscopic adenoidectomy. Objective to observe the effect of tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy on obstructive sleep apnea syndrome of children. Objective to observe the effect of tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy on obstructive sleep apnea syndrome of children. Method court manifestations of 60 children with adenoid hypertrophy were retrospectively analyzed. Method court manifestations of 60 children with adenoid hypertrophy were retrospectively analyzed. Conclusion, adenoidectomy was effective in treating the junior secreta eotitis media. Conclusion, adenoidectomy was effective in treating the junior secreta eotitis media. Adenoidal hypertrophy in children is a main cause of children obstructive sleep apnea hypopnea syndrome, OSAS. Adenoidal hypertrophy in children is a main cause of children obstructive sleep apnea hypopnea syndrome, OSAS. Objective to evaluate the clinical characteristics, diagnosis and treatment of primary tracheal adenoid cystic carcinoma. Objective to evaluate the clinical characteristics, diagnosis and treatment of primary tracheal adenoid cystic carcinoma.
Conclusion, removal of ligation thread combined adenoidectomy was an effective treatment for OSAHS after VRLP. Conclusion, removal of ligation thread combined adenoidectomy was an effective treatment for OSAHS after VRLP. Objective to probe into the value of nasopharynx lateral film in the diagnosis of children adenoidal hypertrophy. Objective to probe into the value of nasopharynx lateral film in the diagnosis of children adenoidal hypertrophy. Purpose – to study the expression and clinical significance of emphase promoting factor in salivary adenoid cystic carcinoma. Purpose – to study the expression and clinical significance of emphase promoting factor in salivary adenoid cystic carcinoma. Objective, to investigate the curative effect of radio frequency and striker instruments under nasal endoscopy on adenoidal hypertrophy in children. Objective, to investigate the curative effect of radio frequency and striker instruments under nasal endoscopy on adenoidal hypertrophy in children. Methods, 31 cases with children adenoid hypertrophy were treated by transnasal endoscopic adenoidectomy through nose mouth with an electric cutters under the TV monitor and follow up 6 to 24 months. Methods, 31 cases with children adenoid hypertrophy were treated by transnasal endoscopic adenoidectomy through nose mouth with an electric cutters under the TV monitor and follow up 6 to 24 months. Method 31 cases with recurrent adenoid cystic carcinoma of parotid gland were studied. Method 31 cases with recurrent adenoid cystic carcinoma of parotid gland were studied. It was then discovered I did, in fact, have a 20 mm adenoma on my lower left parathyroid gland. It was then discovered I did, in fact, have a 20 mm adenoma on my lower left parathyroid gland. Conclusion Preschool children with adenoidal hypertrophy should receive routine acoustic impedance and or autoacoustic emission tests for early diagnosis of secretoriotitis media in this population. Conclusion Preschool children with adenoidal hypertrophy should receive routine acoustic impedance and or autoacoustic emission tests for early diagnosis of secretoriotitis media in this population. Conclusion, adenoidectomy under nasal endoscope is effective, and with few complication and low recurrence rate. Conclusion, adenoidectomy under nasal endoscope is effective, and with few complication and low recurrence rate. Neuroendocrine tumor of the middle ear cavity, or middle ear adenoma, is a rare benign epithelial tumor deriving from middle ear mucosal cells with both epithelial and neuroendocrine properties.
Neuroendocrine tumor of the middle ear cavity, or middle ear adenoma, is a rare benign epithelial tumor deriving from middle ear mucosal cells with both epithelial and neuroendocrine properties. Conclusion Electron – Nasopharyngolaryngoscopy is suitable for the diagnosis of adenoid hypertrophy in children due to its direct, view, accuracy, and safety. Conclusion Electron – Nasopharyngolaryngoscopy is suitable for the diagnosis of adenoid hypertrophy in children due to its direct, view, accuracy, and safety.